Welcome to Happy Crappy Paints, part 16, where I'm painting Saparavo. This is the end result. We're going to use a, a little stronger highlights on this mini than in the previous minis that uh, I've painted so far for, for Conan. Starting with a white primer and uh, the uh, pants, uh, choosing a very light, light brown for the pants. For the boots, we're using uh, Mornfang Brown, uh, for the boots and the gloves, I should say. I like Mornfang uh, Brown uh, because it, it's it's reddish brown tint. Um, you could use another dark brown as well for the boots and the gloves. I was considering using a second shade of brown for the top part of the folded down part of the boot, but decided to uh, to emphasize that through the highlights later on instead. Decided to use Mornfang brown for the scabbard as well for the uh, daggers and the uh, the sword. It is a little bit hard to see, but there there are two daggers. Uh, in his belt. Get to paint the details later on with Runefang steel so you don't have to be too careful um, when you add the brown here. Dark Reaper for the uh, cloth, the second tone cloth. Uh, that is um, hanging down his front and also his back and also come up uh, underneath his uh, helmet and neck. I used a fairly watered uh, Dark Reaper here, um, so I had to go back and, and, and add maybe, I think, two or three layers. You can see here that the Dark Reaper does not cover cover well. Um, so that's why I had to go back and, and add a few extra layers. adding a second layer there. Doing some corrections. Benefit of, of using a wet palette is to have your, your colors fresh on the palette uh, for a few hours 
So doing corrections on the boot and also the pants. My fist on red, the uh, staple red color that we used for almost all minis in Conan so far. As you can see here, I've I've watered it quite a bit. Red is uh, is a color that has a lot of pigment, so you can can add quite a bit of water, and that still covers nicely. So you you can um, add quite a bit of water too if you start red. There is a little shield plate or armor plate on his uh, right hip. So take extra care to not paint over that. There's also two leather straps down to his um, his scabbard there. Uh, you can see it there. That I'm going to paint uh, in a same same color as the pants, tallard sand, a little bit later. Cameras out of focus for a lot of uh, uh, the segment where I painted the arms red, but uh, I did get a little bit of footage of when painting the arms. Painting the uh, face using Kislev Flash. Also out of focus, sadly, for a lot of it. Adding a uh, Dark Reaper to uh, the cloth that goes um, up underneath his helmet. Also adding a third third layer of Dark Reaper to the rest of the cloth there. Using tallard sand for the sword handle and the dagger handles. Gonna use Seraphim Sepia on it later on to Add add some detail and, and create a, a leathery leathery look of the sword handles and the dagger handles. Runefang steel for the armor plates. Runefang is a very bright silver, a lot brighter than lead belcher, for example. And um, I like to use runefang uh, for for plate mail. Um, for minis like these, when it's supposed to be a a, uh, a a clean a clean figure, not too much dirt or grime. Also decided to use rune fang on the details on the sword scabbard.
Continuing with the Rune Fang to all of his armor pieces, including the helmet. Don't forget the inside of the helmet. It's a little tricky to reach. As you might have noticed by now, the chain mail that's underneath uh, the armor that's barely visible at his shoulders, I've not painted those. Um, I decided early on that the only thing I'll do was to to um, use the null oil to get the chain mail effect. Uh, so I've been careful not to get any any paint in there, including any any of the silver really in there, because I want it to be really dark. So when you paint the armor uh, and and the ma mini in general, be careful to not get in the paint between the armor pieces on his shoulders and his chest armor. Here you can see the armor piece on his right hip. the purpose of that is unknown. Using Runefang for the details on the scabbards for the daggers. Having trouble with the focus there, so I, I cut away some of the footage. Adding a uh, tallard sand to the dagger handles. Second uh, brown uh, color for the scabbard to make it scabbard a little more interesting. Here you can see I make, made a mistake and uh, correcting it with uh, Mephisto on red. Starting with the washes and the pants and boots with Agrax Earthshade. As you can see, I'm a little more careful on this mini than, than for example, the Picts when adding the, the Earth Shade. And that's um, mostly because I, I didn't want it to be too dark, really. Um, and I didn't want it to, to add too much and pull too much in the recesses. Don't I don't have any footage, but also add Agrax to the gloves at this stage. I didn't uh, I didn't have footage of that. Carbo crimson for the uh, the red portion of the tunic or whatever it is. You can also see here that uh I'm a little more careful on this mini because I don't want to get any red on particularly the armor pieces because that that be just becomes pink. And, be and ugly. Um, some of the places I'm I'm just dabbing it on, barely, barely stro uh, using any brush strokes, just putting it on. Using null oil gloss for the plate armor. Null null oil gloss is uh, is really good for for paladins and the such where. You when you want plate mail or plate armor to be bright or shine or shiny, it will dull if you have a matte varnish to protect your mini 
uh, and you might need to go back with some art coat to bring up the shine again. You can see that uh, I, I am adding null oil to the the little space between the plate mail and the shoulder plates to get the chain mail uh, to look look good. Seraphim Sepia, using that for the face and also for the handles to the uh, of the sword and the daggers. I'm not adding a lot here, just a little bit. The dagger handles and the sword handles, I'm actually adding Seraphim Sepia twice or three times to get the detail back. Also, the whole of the scabbard in Seraphim Sepia, uh, th this wash will make the Rune Fang steel become yellowish, almost like goldish. So it's it's a trick you can use to to make it look like gold. Drakenhof Nightshade uh, for the blue cloth. Getting to the finish line, now we need to do some details and highlights and then we're done. Starting with the eyes, uh, ceramic white uh, for the eyes and then uh, Abaddon black for the irises. As you can see here, I'm, I'm actually missing quite a bit with Abaddon black soon here and it looks kind of horrible uh, in the beginning. but. Uh, yeah, you know, happens sometimes, and uh, it en ended up being quite interesting and good looking anyway. Because uh, after a while, or in in a little bit, when we go back and add Kislev Flash, uh, you can shape shape the eyes to look interesting. Also using Abaddon Black for the mustache. Here you can see that I'm initially painted the mustache uh, a little differently, and I decided that that's not how the actual mini looked. I, m I made a mistake looking at the details, I think. So I went back and uh, painted Kislev Flash over the mustache and reshaped the mustache, as you can see here, as a to a regular goatee instead. Here I'm shaping the eyes with Kislev Flash, uh, removing a lot of the, the white and the iris. Here you can also s uh, see that I'm uh, uh, painting over the beard. Ah, okay, the footage was gone. I think it was too blurry. But, uh, here, um, here I've fixed the mustache so it looks more like a go goatee, or the beard so it looks like a goatee instead. Adding Kislev to the top of the nose, the cheekbones, and also the forehead. So you can see that the eyes actually ended up looking quite interesting, even though they looked quite horrible to start with. Here I'm making some corrections with Rune Fang uh, to the top of the plate mail where I got some of the skin color, the Kislev. Fulgurite Copper as a highlight to the armor. 
So I want the ornamental pieces to the to the chest of the the breastplate, and also the edges of the armor. Uh, is what I painted with fulgurite copper. When using fulgurite copper in this way, treat it, treat it almost as a dry brush. Uh, don't have a lot of paint on your brush and um, go go over the areas um, more with a, a little drier brush rather than having the brush too wet. Um, you want to treat it as a, as a highlight and it you don't have to have a, lo a lot of the copper on the on the mail. It doesn't matter if if the silver shines through the copper because it, it is more of a highlight detail than than an actual color that needs to cover the uh, plate mail underneath. You could even go as far as only or or dry brushing some fulgurite copper um, to the actual plate mail pieces as well to the top parts of it that hits the whether the light hits it from from the top. Uh, I didn't do that, but I think that can look really, really good to dry brush a little bit of the copper to the f flatter portions of the mail as well with a very, very dry, dry brush. Just a hint, hint of the copper. Quite a bit of the footage here that's out of focus. Apologize for that. Also, the fulgurite copper. I decided to use that for the ornamental pieces on his helmet as well. Moving on to highlights. Using tallard sand. Oh, sorry. Details first. Um, the uh, leather straps that holds the boots, or the top fold of the boots down. I use tallard sand for for those. Gonna add highlights to the boots, so don't worry too much if you go out or out of the. Like you see, I'm doing here. I'm making a few mistakes on the outside of the the uh, leather strap. Going to correct the mistakes on the leather strap with the uh, highlight, the Mornfang highlight, like I'm doing here. Continue to add highlight to the raised portions of the boots. Uh, the top top of the folded down uh, portion and the front of the boot, the toes. And the top of the gloves and knuckles. Uh, add white scar to talent sand. Uh, maybe uh, one third white. Uh, make it a very bright highlight. As you can see, this is more of a stronger highlight than I've done previously on the Conan mi minis. I wanted to, to try to try that to make the mini pop a little bit more. Uh, I think it it went really well. Um, so be brave and, uh, and and go brighter than you think when you do highlights. The end results look really good. That's my, my lesson on this mini is to go brighter than I think when doing highlights. And if if you're unhappy, you could always shade it down again too as well, make it darker. Similarly add a lot of white to the Mornfang to to bring out the very top portions of the boot. 
If you wish, you can you can do this in in multiple steps. So adding a little less white first, and paint a larger surface area with that, and then progressively mix in more white, and paint a s smaller and smaller surface areas. At the very last layer, you can go almost pure white if you wish uh, to to spend a lot of time on the stage. Uh, I I didn't do that. I thought that uh, just um, doing it to this degree added a lot uh, of depth to the mini. So um, I'm very happy with how it ended up. Don't forget to go over the knuckles and the tops of fingers and the thumb uh, on both hands here. Also add white to Mephiston red. Uh, this is a little tricky because too much m white makes it pink, very very pink. Here all the footage was blurry, uh, unfortunately, so I don't have any footage of actually painting on the highlights to the red. But as you can see, I I touched the, the edges of the cloth and the tips of the uh, creases, both in the arms, elbows and the bottom parts of the tunic. So it look, looked really good, I think. And just about on the borderline of too pink. But it worked out. Painting the base black is almost the last thing we do. Uh, I realized uh, after I painted the base that I forgot to highlight the blue cloth. So I'm gonna go back and do that now. And that's the very last step. Mixing white scar with uh, uh, our dark reaper. As you can see, this becomes very, very close to rust gray. So you can you can just use rust gray if you'd like. Similarly to to the red, uh, add a highlight to the top part of the cloth and to the raised portions, and also to the larger surface areas, like like I do here, to make the the recessed areas be the ones that are the dark are the darkest. Here I'm adding a second layer. I didn't have any footage that was sharp or wasn't unfocused on the front, but uh, uh, also add a highlight to the front of the cloth. And that's it. We're done with Saparavo. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe. Thanks.